Hey everybody, Tom Joya from Visionary Music Group here. Hope you're doing great. Thanks for watching. This is the second video in our Demo to Master series, where we take a demo from a songwriter or artist and show you every step of the way how we finish it into a completed master. Also keeping in mind, these are all virtual productions. So the artist and the singers, we were all never in the room together and we did it through technology, file sharing, Zoom. So we hope you enjoy it. This second song in our series is called Do or Die by songwriter Dan Young. So Dan has Cubase and he just sent me consolidated audio and he told me what the tempo was. So I loaded that into my session, color coded them and put in markers so I could navigate the form of the song. He also mentioned a couple of other songs that he wanted to use as a reference and I listened to those and took notes, downloaded them and had them readily available in the session to refer to. So let's take a listen to what Dan had given me. You were born with an attitude, trash talk. Let's jump ahead. All right, cool. So it's basically a pretty solid tune. There is some things that have to be chopped down. So my initial reaction was it's not driving enough and the chorus can really be anthemic and we're not achieving that. The piano part with the arpeggiated notes is, is too busy and then too static. So there's no dynamic flow up and down. The organ that comes in comes in in the second verse when I really think it should maybe be happening in the chorus. And the pads are just too much. They're in the same frequency. They're filling up too much space. I also think it could be faster, and I also think the tempo might have to have some variation to make some more emotion and drama. So I checked the references that Dan gave me, and they were pretty heavily uh, using stomps and claps, and they were much faster. So here's one interesting thing to bear in mind. Dan sent me this and just wanted me to play guitar on it. But I really think the drums and the, the track is not living up to the song so if you want let me take a crack see what i can do in the three hours i would have done a guitar session in rearranging and producing the track so dan said give it a try and let's see what happens first order of business would be new drums so i wanted to keep the flavor of the drums that he had but i also wanted to you know make them sound better and make it make a little more sense with with the melody so the other tune that he referenced had four on the floor stuff and claps. So what I did on this pop kit, I used the kick drum and the tom playing the floors. And I had a clap on two and four. Then I had a regular groove kind of floating around on, on this, my normal like rock kit. Here was his. And here is, this, is the chorus. And his. So what I was trying to do was capture more excitement, have more driving power, pick up the energy level, and emulate some of the things he heard in his reference tracks. So that was step one. So once Dan approved that, then step two for me is to dig in a little more and see how far I could take it. So this is the second session, and this will be more, more drums happening and a little more expansion. So now let's check out a little bit of the verse, and we'll check out a little bit of the chorus. So now we have some stomps in there. And 
Now the chorus just changes up a little bit. So that gives you the idea. We just really added stomps with this, and I tightened up of little things going on. And the kick drum pattern was, was changed just a little bit to accommodate some of the vocal things. Session number three was when I started to mess around a little bit with the tempo and experiment and see what else I could do with the drums and then kind of decide if he, he was digging the new, the new tempo. So what you're going to hear now is the tempo thing and then there'll be some artifacts in the, in the vocals and some of the keyboard parts that he had because they weren't MIDI. They were obviously things that were played and sang. So... They might sound weird in some spots, so just bear with that. And this is really just a reference to get us through to figure out what the tempo should be. Okay, so the first thing you'll see is up here, the tempo map is open. So the tempo jumped to 143, and then in the chorus, we boosted the tempos to 144 and back down. So that was our first step in that, in that process. So let's listen to what we have and see what else we added. Now, I'll see there's some new things over here. So this action kit from Tune Tracks kind of has a built-in Phil Collins tom-tom sound, which can be pretty powerful. So Dan played that arpeggiated piano part, and I thought it was too busy, and I wanted more drive and more power. So I just decided to go with straight quarter note pulses on the piano. So let's check out what we did here. So we had footballs, you know, whole notes. Then we had two bars before the chorus. We had quarter notes. Then we had Dan's arpeggiated eighth notes to build us up. Then we had a cut for a little drama. Then we dropped right into the chorus, and it was quarter notes on the piano. So here's, here's the piano and the percussion and drums that we did. Okay, cool. So you have the idea there. So let's look at some other things. We have this with like a bass drop sub sound. You know, a little accentuating power. So let's check out some keyboard pads we might have done. Now you notice here this blue is his pad and it was muted. So that's because we modified the pad part and changed it up to make a little more space. So let's see what we have. There was two, two patches in there we used. So we used Omnisphere, and here's this bright pad. And then we also added a new bass part. So let's see what happened with that. Hear it all in context. Cool. So what we did in this session was we changed the tempo. We also boosted the choruses by one. We added some more toms. We added these action toms. We added an 808. We redid the bass part. We added some sub drops and snare bombs. And we had some editing done to Dan's pad. So let's jump over to our fourth session which has some more tempo moves. Since he wrote from the piano, I thought it was important to give him an illustration of where the piano was going and how that was gonna interact with everything. So on this one, I had to kind of do the tempo, the drums, the main piano, and some of the bass simultaneously. Since Dan's a good musician, he has a good ear for arrangements, I thought it was important that we check each of those steps. Okay, so session four. Looking right at the top, tempo got moved up again. There's some more changes to build things a little bit. We still have our stomps, pop drums. Let's see what we did here. So all this automation you'll see down here is sustained pedal automation. So I copied Dan's MIDI track, and I edited it down to be less parts, less busy, but I kept his voicings. So it initially was kind of his thing, but just rearranged a little rhythmically. But then all his pedals were operating differently, so that's all of that editing. I never really get into automation at any time soon. Organ, we had changed here, so... So 
So as you can see there, it's starting to take a little bit of shape, but we're still not there yet. And then I added some beef with these toms. So here's that part again. Messed with the tempo some more, accented some things with the toms, which was a hook, and it was a part that was in Dan's original drums from his demo. We achieved quite a bit on that one. Now, going to number five is when I started to really tighten up the drum set. Now, I haven't printed a lot of stuff yet because the tempo still may be in flux, so we may make a change, we may not. So this will be our fifth session, and we're kind of getting the drums a little bit better. So what we did in this session is we finalized our tempo right before I got to this point. And we finalized what we wanted the drum part to be. And I printed all my drums. This is the uh, Superior Mixer. We did all our fills and everything you can see back here in the groove window. This Superior Drum 3 is a great, great setup. So we decided we were good with the drums. We kind of signed off on that, the form and the tempo. So what I, I do is I would print out of Superior Drummer each to an individual track, so it'll be like a real se a real session recording a drum set, kicks, snares, rooms, overheads, hi-hat, and toms. Cool, so what did we achieve in session five? We, we wrapped up getting the drums the way we wanted them, the tempo changes, and printing the drum set. So now all of our percussion and all of our drums are all recorded, stomps, loops, whatever we needed, it's all done, and it's, it's set. So now our arrangement is set, our form is set, and our bottom end of things is set. So that was our first video, Demo to Master, Do or Die by Dan Young. Thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. We appreciate your support. Hit the like button. It does help us out a lot. Feel free to leave a comment. We'll be glad to answer it. Any questions, it does help the YouTube algorithm. Hit the notification bell, and we can let you know when we have more content like this coming. So stay tuned for a part two of Do or Die, Demo to Master, and we're going to delve into all the new keyboard parts. Thanks.